Joining me now, former Whitewater Independent Counsel, former federal prosecutor, Thompson and Knight partner, Robert Ray. Robert, we had uh, New Gingrich on earlier, and he says his conclusion from all of this is that the, it proves it was a massive uh, cover-up of sorts and a deliberate effort by officials in the Obama administration to sway the election. What did you get from the, this, this testimony? He may be right, but that's what we have an investigation to determine. That's why the inspector general's report, when we eventually see it, I think now I'm being told sometime in September, it's been promised for some time, and apparently there was more investigation to do as a result of the fact that other people became available to be interviewed. And then, of course, also the attorney general has commissioned now two U.S. attorneys separately to look into, right. I think, what we all sort of now understand to be the let's figure out what happened as the result of how this investigation came into being. And so we're going to learn in the fall, we're going to start, I think, here some more, and the narrative will shift, I think, away from impeachment to the so-called investigation of the investigators. Everyone was shocked by something during, during the hearing. Uh, you know, it just was not what was advertised. And a lot of people came away from that with different... I hope they weren't too shocked because, you know, really? I think, you know, Bob Mueller did exactly what he said he was going to do. And the Department of Justice was clear that they were going to make sure that he did what he said he was going to do, which was track the report and don't stray outside of that report. But it felt like he didn't even know what the report was, though. Like, you know, he didn't... You know, maybe he oversaw it, but he, he didn't seem to have as much uh, knowledge about the report as one would have assumed. It's a big investigation. Um, I don't think it's surprising, since I've written final reports, that, uh, you know, I, I wasn't responsible for uh, writing every single word that was in a collection of five final reports that were sent ultimately um, to the court and then on to and released to the public and right. the American people. But it is also true that I read everything and stood behind every single word in that report. I did write some, you know, some of it, not all of it. Uh, and the only criticism I ever had of Bob Mueller was the fact, that essentially just one sentence, I don't think he should have gotten into this whole question about whether what the investigation represented was either an exoneration or not an exoneration. That's not what prosecutors do. And that's out of 448 pages, you know, again, on the assumption, as he said and testified, that the words were very carefully chosen. In my own view, that was, um, you know, a poor exercise of judgment. That, that sentence should not have been there. Well, I'm really, really fascinated by that because I think Everybody watched this whole thing, or not everybody watched the whole thing, but all everybody took away from was one sentence. And that, that exoneration sentence, that statement that he made, is what the Democrats are now hanging everything on. They're saying, look, he just gave room for the fact that there was criminal behavior and that when he gets out of office, right. we can go after him. I mean, well, no, I agree with you. I don't think that one sentence is a bombshell. I don't think it's appropriately in the report. But if that's what you're hanging your hat on in order to justify prolonging the agony and this sort of notion right. about, well, we're not really conducting an impeachment proceeding, but we have to say that we are at least having an, an inquiry to look to see whether we're going to have an impeachment proceeding so that we can get was, an additional material and so that we can subpoena that, Don McGahn and all the rest of that. Particularly you know, that's silly. hit him hard on that whole thing in, in the first place. But I do want to shift a little bit because Maria also sat down with former Trump campaign aide George Papandopoulos, who he told her that he plans to head back to Greece to retrieve a $10,000 payment that he said it was used to entrap him by the FBI and the CIA. You are given money in Israel, $10,000 in cash. You don't keep the money. You send it and you give it to your lawyers, and then you get on a flight to go home, to go back to Dulles or, or wherever you were going to Dulles. When you land, there are FBI agents arresting you, asking you, do you have any money? Basically, that's exactly what happened. And uh, what I think this whole uh, setup was all about was uh, trying to frame a FARA violation against me that I was under some sort of illicit surveillance for, for actually, I think, years. And then, of course, uh, this $10,000, which I believe was a setup by the FBI, likely, or even the special uh, counsel's office, it was designed to make it look like I was actually some sort of foreign agent, which I never have been and I never will be. Robert, your thoughts? He has commented publicly in another, on another occasion about, I think the words were, ridiculous prosecutorial overreach. And he may well have 
uh, a substantial claim in that regard. In my view, once we find out and get to the bottom of all this, I will say for people who don't do this every day, uh, you'd be surprised what you see in the name of uh, criminal investigations and the sorts of things that go on. Uh, as the Supreme Court also once said, prosecutors are around to strike hard blows, but not foul ones. And I think here, uh, what I think he is providing a window on is that there may well have been foul blows here, which is not acceptable. Robert Ray, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks, Charles.